Let's translate John chapter 15, verses 12 through 17. Afti estin i entoli i imi, ina agapate alilus kathos igapisa imas. Mitzona taftis agapin udis echi, ina tis tin psichin of tu thi iper ton filon of tu. Imis fili mu este ean piiti piite a ego entelome imin. Uketi lego imas dulus, oti o dulos, uk iden, ti pi of tu o kirios, imas de irika filus, oti panta a ikusa para tu patros mu ignorisa imin. Uch imis me excelexaste, al ego excelexamin. Imas ke ethika, imas ina imis, ipagite, ke carpon, ferite, ke o carpos imon meni, ina oti an etisite, ton patera ento onomati mu do imin, tavta entelome imin ina agapate alilus. So this is my command that you might love one another just as I loved you. Greater this love no one has that one or anyone his life might give on behalf of his friends. You, friends, or you, you, my friends, you are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer I call you slaves because the slave does not know what His master is doing but you I have called friends because everything which I heard from my father I've made known to you or I made known to you you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you in order that you might go and bear fruit and your fruit might remain in order that what whatever you might ask the father in my name he might give to you. These I command you in order that you might love one another. This is my commandment. Here's one of the rare instances where we get to leave the entire phrase as is. And to save space, normally I would put this beneath, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put it up here in order that you might love one another. And then we have a comparison just as I loved you. Now, greater this love. This is our subject right here and our verb. No one has greater love than this. What is this? It's Ina that anyone would give up or lay down his life for his friends. Iper 
modifying lay down. For is friends. Here's our subject in the next verse. Emis, you are my friends. If you do what I command you. Here's the dative of recipient, entolome, entelo, entelome, you mean. So you are my friends if you do what I command you. This is a third class condition. We'll talk about that later. The longer going to move this over here. I like putting the adverb second. I no longer call you. Here's our, our object. And now we have a double accusative here. I call you servant. So this modifies imas. Why? Because servant does not know what move this around what his master is doing because the servant does not know what his master is doing now we have a contrast not with this phrase but rather over here but I have called you Philus. Now, Philus here is an adjective, but it is functioning here as a noun, as a substantive. Parallel to doulos. So, doulos to Philus. Doulos to Philus. And because I have made known to you over here like this and then we have our data of direct object or I'm sorry data of indirect object made known all things what all what is all things it's what I heard from my father. So I have made known to you everything which I heard from my father. You did not choose me but I chose you normally I would put this over here to show the parallel but I'm not going to because of space but I chose you and appointed you in order that you might go and you might bear fruit and fruit why isn't it let me 
let me. That's bizarre. I got a weird bug. And your fruit might remain. So he's appointed them to go and bear fruit, fruit that will remain. Why does he do all that? In order that whatever you might ask. The father in my name. You might give. Oh, why did I do that? To you. Remember that whatever you might ask the Father in my name, he might give to you. This is, I command, we'll talk about that later. So I'll command you these things in order that you might love one another. So there we go. This is my command that you love one another, just as I loved you. No one has greater love than this. Actually, this needs to be done here. In order that anyone might lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because slave a slave or the slave does not know what his master is doing but i have called you friends because i have made known to you everything which i heard from my father you did not choose me but i chose you and appointed you in order that you might go and bear fruit and uh, your fruit might remain in order that whatever you ask the father in my name he might give to you i commanded i command you these things in order that you might love one another let's take a look at some of the vocabulary Entoli. This is a commandment, ordinance. Use of the precepts of Jesus. And me here is the possessive singular pronoun. My, emos. Ina. Ina plus the subjunctive is one of the great uh, New Testament syntax. It differs from classic uh, Attic Greek. Here you can see it's used to mark uh, purpose, aim, or goal, translated as in order that, or simply as that, with the subjunctive. be a marker of objective probably not here since we have the subjunctive and yet here we have an example John 15 12 so 
this is the objective. But very often the final meaning is greatly weakened or disappears altogether. In this case, the ena construction serves as a substitute for an infinitive that su supplements a verb or an accusative with an infinitive. Yeah, that, that could very well be the case here. This is my command that you love one another. I think that makes more sense than translating it in order that not a purpose so much as this is the object of the command or I'm sorry the objective of the command and then we have alos from alilon here genitive of the reciprocal each other one another mutually so love each other mutually just as I loved you. First, ser first singular aorist, active indicative. I loved you. Now we have uh, an adjectival construction here. It's a superlative. Greater love than this. Let's take a look at Megas here. Imperative is mesone, used of emotions. So joy, fear, anger, love. John 15, 13. Greater love. And Udi's here. No one, nothing. No one. No one has a greater love than this. I want to look at the genitive here, use the genitival use of tavtis, tavtis being from utos. So let's turn to our grammar. We'll go to Wallace's Greek. We'll look at the genitival use. A descriptive genitive, possessive genitive, genitive of relationship, partitive genitive, attributive, attributed, material, content, simple apposition, genitive of apposition, genitive of destination, predicate genitive, genitive of subordination, genitive of production or producer, and genitive of product. These are all adjectival genitives. It has to be adjectival here because we are dealing with uh, our demonstrative pronoun in connection with a comparative adjective and a, a head noun. If the genitive is primarily descriptive, then it is largely similar to the adjective in function. However, although the genitive is primarily adjectival in force, it is more emphatic than a simple adjective would be. So helping to d discover which one are we looking at, we're going to use these, these uh, bracketed helping translation glosses to help us identify is this, is this, this particular kind of genitive. Descriptive genitive or, or what's called the aporetic genitive. Characterized. Greater characterized love. This doesn't seem to, to work very well. We'll move on already. Possessive, belonging to? No, it's not belonging to love. Relationship, familial? This is definitely not it. Partitive, holative, which is a part of. No, that's not it. Attributive, this is the Hebrew genitive, genitive of quality. Hmm. No, that's still not it. We're looking for something comparative. Attributed. Opposite of attributive. The head noun rather than the genitive is functioning in a sense as an attributive adjective. Although rarer than the attributive genitive, this is not altogether uncommon. I 
still don't think this is it. Genitive of material. No, it's not made out of or consisting of. Still not content, full of or containing. Simple apposition. See the following section for discussion of this genitive. The key to identification, which is, who is, this is not what we are dealing with here. Genitive of destination. Nope, there's no direction here. Purpose. Nope, it's not destined for or toward. Predicate genitive. The genitive substantive makes an assertion about another genitive substantive. Nope, that's not the case. Genitive subordination over. Nope, not, not what we're looking at. Production producer. The genitive substantive produces the noun to which it stands related. Produced by. All right, so none of these worked. How then are we supposed to understand this? Let's take a look at the definition for utos. As a substantive, the person or thing comparatively near at hand in the disclosure, discourse material. Uh, this, this one. Generally, as adjective, pertaining to an entity perceived as present or near in the discourse, this. before substantive with the article. No, that's not the case here. Following the substan substantive that has the article. No, the article is sometimes lacking. That's the case here. In such case, there is no real connection between the demonstrative and the noun, but the one or the other belongs to the predicate. Well, that's true. So especially in combination with numerical statement, the noun without the article is to be taken as part of the predicate. Utos mean ectos estin, this is the sixth month. John 4.54. Third day. It's more intricate. Acts 1.5. U metapolas taftas imeras. Translated, not many days from now, but literally not uh, with much these days. Not many days from now. Most difficult of all, peri mias taftis phonis. Acts 24, 21. So concerning one of these sounds or voices. That's not really helping us. And when we took a look at Megas here, uh, it didn't really tell us a whole lot. I wonder if the genitival use of Tavtis here, uh, we've just not covered it in the grammar yet. So I want to go back. already looked at the adjectival. We have ablative, verbal, adverbial, and after certain words. Let's start with after certain words. Genitive after certain verbs as a direct object. Doesn't appear to be the case here. Uh, it's gotta be, it's got to be after megas. Adjectives and adverbs. Certain adjectives, such as axios, worthy of, and adverbs, normally take a genitive object. In many instances, the adjective adverb is an embedded transitive verb, thus taking an objective genitive. He is deserving of X, it means he deserves X, or involving a partitive idea. Check BDAG, or this says BAGD, 
under various adjectives and adverbs or BDF for a list. In reality, most of these examples also fit under some of the genitive use equally well, such as partitive, objective, content, reference, etc. Genitive after certain nouns. After certain prepositions. Okay, well, we know. We've got megas, and it's the comparative mesome. All right, let's go back to the grammar. doesn't appear to be after any specific certain words. I thought it would be comparative, but I'm not seeing it in connection with uh, megas. Um, we've already checked adjectival. We might as well start here at ablative. The notion of separation. requires than as its gloss. The idea can be static in a separated state or progressive movement away from so as to become separated. The emphasis may be on either the state resulting from the separation or the cause of separation in the latter origin or source is emphasized. This doesn't appear to be any sort of separation. Out of, away from, there's no movement involved. There's no preposition to suggest it. Genitive of source, origin, out of the right, and it's on. This doesn't make sense. Genitive of comparison, there we go. So it's an ablative genitive, genitive of comparison. The genitive substantive, almost always after a comparative adjective, which is what we have here, is used to indicate comparison. The genitive then is the standard against which the comparison is made. In X is greater than Y, the genitive is the Y. Greater love than this. Taftis, than this. So we're not gonna translate this uh, greater these or greater this, it's greater love than this. We have to supply than because we have a genitive uh, utos here. So, no one has a greater love than this. That piece Normally it's an inter interrogative. If it has the accent, it doesn't have the accent. Yeah. Or if it's a uh, grave accent, anyone, anything, someone, something. So that's the difference here. The accents do matter. In this case, there's no accent, but it falls in line here the reference to someone or something indefinite. Anyone, anything, someone, something. But we're going to translate this masculine singular nominative as anyone. That, uh, or you could just say one instead of anyone. Just like here, A1. In order that one might, this is Tithimi, so lay down, may lay down his life. So see he here, life, soul. Uh, this is the same thing as when we say there are 200 souls on board the flight. Uh, we mean 200 lives. So just because this is the word for soul, the psyche, uh, we're gonna translate this as, as life. And uh, so, in order that one might lay down 
his life. Iper ton filon of two. Iper. This is genitive. For, in behalf of, for the sake of, for the sake of his friends, for the, or on behalf of his friends. And then philon here. This is philos. You know, like Philadelphia. This is beloved, dear, um, devoted, uh, intimate with someone. Ophilos, friend. Now, we have this comparison, and then it culminates in an ina clause, ina plus subjunctive, third singular aorist active subjunctive. So, in order that one might lay down his life for his friends, or it might be that we have another uh, objective here. In this case, BDAG actually does not say it's objective. It does say it's in order to, or in this case, in order to show, and it's comparing with John 15, 13. Let's see if it adds anywhere else, John 15, 13. Yes, it does. Ina can also take the place of the explanatory infinitive after a demonstrative. So in this case, it's explaining our demonstrative here. Tavtis is our demonstrative. Ina is our explanation. So that makes a lot of sense. And because of that, it's going to fall into the second category of objective. So we'll just translate it as that. The greater love no one has than this. That one might lay down his life on behalf of his friends. You are my friends. If, if you might do what I command you. Aeon is the marker of the third class condition. So Aeon plus subjunctive. Uh, BDAG says with probability of activity expressed in the verb left open and thereby suited especially for generalized statements. So normally third class condition is along the lines of if A then B, it's simple. Uh, it could also be used of future more probable. So in the future, if you do that here, there's no real sense of future action. It's just simply a simple if A, then B. So if you do what I command you, you are my friends. So this is generally true. This is, uh, th there is this sense of generic. We don't know if you're going to do it, but it'd be true at all times generally true at all times. Uketi. Uketi. Extension of time up to a point, but not beyond. No more, no longer, no further. I call you. So Lego usually means I say, I speak. Uh, but it could also bear the sense of call. Express, inform, report, identify in a specific manner, call, name. So I no longer call you slaves. Here we have our double accusative, imas, and then dulus, du dulus, modifying imas. I no longer call you slaves. <clears throat> OT here is not that uh, in terms of discourse. Instead, it's explanatory, so it's going to be right here. We're going to translate it uh, because. BDAG puts it as causality, because or since, it's subordinating. Uh, you could translate it for instead of because I'm gonna leave it as because because the servant does not know so Eden is an irregular verb it comes from Ida and it 
means to know. It's perfect in form, but probably translated as present. The servant does not know what his master, his lord, is doing. P-E-O, I do, I make. So this is this being present, active indicative, we're gonna translate this as what his master is doing. But, there's a good example of day, meaning contrast. Okay, usually we see Allah, but here it's day, contrasting with Lego. So Lego versus Eureka. So Eureka is also Lego, it's just that Eureka is the perfect active indicative of Lego. Lego is one of our irregular verbs in Greek. But I have called you friends because there's that connection we saw before. Because everything, the pas pas upon, pertaining to totality with focus on its individual components, each, every, all. out of the totality marker of the highest degree of something completeness wholeness everything belonging and kind to the class designated by the noun every kind of all sorts of yeah I'm gonna say it's just everything or all highest degree all which I heard Kuo. This is the sing singular, first singular aorist active indicative. You know it's aorist because it has this uh, sigma alpha tense formative plus our compensatory lengthening. So, ikusa. I heard from my father. So, Akuo can often take a, a, a genitive or para. So you can see. No, I think para here just marks who's doing the action of speaking to which this person is doing the action of hearing or listening. Hearing someone else speaking. Hearing para to patros move. with genitive, which nearly always is in Homer, indicates that something proceeds from this person. But clearly, the father is speaking. Jesus is saying he's listening. And not, not only is he listening, but he's then conveying that message to his friends. He's making it known, egnorizo, or egnorisa. So this is norizo, Cause information to become known, make known, reveal. And you did not choose me, Eklegome, to pick someone, choose, to make a choice in accordance with significant preference, select. Uh, and this verb being middle is going to have this reflexive aspect of some sort to select someone for oneself. So that's an important component here. Select someone for oneself. You did not select me, but I selected you. And then we have Tithi me. Tithi me here is not lay down there's another use of tithimi and that is to appoint to assign to some task or function appoint 
There may be a play on words here, but when it comes to translating it here, a point. And so I selected you and appointed you. Appointed you for a task. Well, what that? What task is that? Well, in order that you might go, Ipago here, go, go away. This is to be on the move. It's absolute go. The context applies the destination. There's no real destination here except culminating in bearing fruit. Ferro. To bear or carry from one place to another. Carry, bear. Bring with one. Carry a burden, bear a name. Bear grant a favor. To cause an entity to move from one position to another. Lead, bring. To cause to follow a certain course in direction or conduct. I think we're getting closer, but still not there. To move an object to a particular point, to cause to continue in a state of condition, sustain, to afford passage to a place, to bring a thought or idea into circulation, to demonstrate the reality of something, to hold out in the face of difficulty, or last, to be productive. Ah, last but not least. So to be productive means to bear, produce. This is used of plants and fruits literally but also metaphorically and that's what we have here so we're going to bear fruit we're going to produce fruit we're going to produce fruit that lasts that remains so it says and uh, and again we're still continuing this ena clause here in order that your fruit might remain meno to stay you can see many Third singular, present, active, subjunctive. Ina plus subjunctive. So remain, stay. Last, persist, continue. Survive. Something along those lines. So your fruit might last. In order that... Uh, this might be in order that it might be so that sometimes Ina can be a result clause instead of instead of a uh, purpose clause. BDAG here suggests cause bring about. That would be causal. That would be uh, so that, and it ties it to a point. I pointed you. Cause, bring about, in order that, or sorry, that, whatever you might ask in my name, and you're asking who? You're asking the Father, by my name, he might give to you. So whatever you might ask, now it still doesn't guarantee he will give it to you. Again, we're dealing with some sort of special construction here it's it's not a guarantee that is why it is subjunctive and not indicative or uh, as an indicative it's not future in order that whatever you might ask the father he might give to you it doesn't say he will give it to you he might give it to you Tavta en telome Imin, ina agapate alilus. These I command to you in order that you might love one another. So the purpose is that you might love one another. Let's see. Summon, encourage, order. Marker of objective, that. So BDAG suggests that this is another that, that you might love one another. Tavta en telome imin. John 5, 17 right here. With OT following, that's not the case. OT is nowhere to be found here. But 
Ina is, with, an, with Ina following. So I'm giving you instructions, I'm giving you orders, I'm giving you a command. I'm commanding these things to you. I, I'm giving you these things in order that you might love one another. So saying I'm giving you these things is a really loose translation. It's really in the sense of I'm giving you these instructions. I'm giving you these commands. I'm giving to you these commands. We know that tavta can't be the subject because our verb is singular. Tavta here is plural. This has to be our uh, direct object. Okay, it's accusative. And then we have our indirect object here with the dative. Uh, da so this would be dative recipients. I'm giving this to you, giving these commands to you because then Telome bears this notion of instructions, commands, orders. So to wrap this up, here's our translation. Jesus is speaking. He says, this is my command that you love one another just as I loved you. No one has greater love than this, that anyone might lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you servants because the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends because everything which I heard from my father, I made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you in order that you might go and bear fruit and your fruit might remain, that whatever you might ask the Father in my name, he might give to you. I give you these commands in order that you might love one another. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button. Check out the Hebrew and Greek videos to brush up on your biblical languages. And we will see you next time.